Hi there, my name is Mrs. Hale. And I'm Mr. Lang. And we both teach at Archway North Phoenix. And we are putting together a recital together to show it to everybody in Great Hearts Network, and we're very excited. First music we are going to play is Telemann's Sonata in C minor. Uh, as a clarinet player, it's really hard to find the Baroque piece, especially written by major composers like Vivaldi or Bach, because it, was, it didn't exist back then. The clarinet was a very young instrument. It was just invented just very end of the Baroque period, so even if it existed back then, no one really wanted to write for it. So every single time we want to play Baroque music, we borrow it from other players. Um, for this music, it was originally written for flute, but it's transcribed for clarinet as well. Wonderful. And one of the things that I wanted to show all you students um, was the score that I was working with. Uh, you'll see here in this low part that the bass line is all that I get. Um, this was a style of writing that we call basso continuo, um, or sometimes we just call it continuo. And it was an improvised style um, with just this roadmap. So I just get the bottom note of my chord, and then these numbers here would tell me what kinds of chords I would create to provide the harmony um, to go underneath the soloist. So in a moment when we start the piece, you'll see how those funny little number symbols are realized underneath the bass line. So please enjoy. music we're going to play is the first movement of Schumann's fantasy pieces. Uh, Schumann is from the romantic, mu um, romantic music era where a lot of great music came from. Tchaikovsky, Brahms, Wagner, they're all from the romantic period. What made Schumann such a famous pu person at his time is not only his writing, he was also a critic. In these, he went to the magazines and other journals to write about the newest music and criticize whether he liked it because what they did or he didn't like it because what they did or didn't do. He's especially famous for not liking Wagner's music. Interestingly, he actually wrote a very harsh comments about his music and it's his own taste. And he's known to also marry a very prolific pianist's daughter, um, Clara Schumann. She's also known to be a very successful lady with a father, a father and mother of eight children as well. Um, he's also known for writing music that is really easy to listen for the ear, but he tends to write a very hard way. So if you don't know the music quite well, you get easily lost in this really simple melody because it is wrote, is written down very differently. Absolutely. Um... One of the, the things that you'll hear a lot in this piece in particular um, is a, a rhythmic proportion over and over again. Um, Miss Hale will be playing her clarinet in a lot of duple patterns. 
um, da, da, de, de, de. For many of our students, those are TTs, T, 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 T. But I will be playing in triple patterns, um, something like these arpeggios, which for our students is often performed as pineapple, pineapple, pineapple. And when you play pineapple and TT together, as Schumann asks us to do in this piece, you get this fun little proportion. I'll use these two notes for my TTs and these three for my pineapples, just to show you what that triplet against eighth note um, feeling is like. It goes. And it's very easy to get lost in those rhythms when they go back and forth like that. It's just one of the, the beautiful things that other romantic composers, but especially uh, Schumann, uh, would get all tangled up in. So please enjoy.
Okay, the third music we're playing is one of my favorite uh, first sonata, first clarinet sonata by Brahms. Brahms was one of the favorite person to critique by Schumann. In fact, they were really close friends to each other. In fact, they shared a lot of traits such as three uh, triple against duple pattern, and sometimes they share some simiola, himiolas to their major works of art. It's really hidden there. So I suggest you to listen for it and find it. It's really fun. One thing that makes this piece very enjoyable, though it's very difficult for a clarinet to play, is Brahms's personality. He was a very reserved, grumpy man. He didn't want to speak to anyone that much except his friend Schumann and he's very difficult to find it. And he's never say yes to invitations. And you never guess this kind of man actually has a very lovely and beautiful melody inside him and it's actually played really nicely. And what makes him especially special is that Brahms knew this kind of player called Ricard Mulfeld and he absolutely fell in love with him. His playing it was dark and it was luscious sound. He came out of his retirement to play, to write music for only for him. And those are actually cherished music by Clyde Repertoire until to this day. All the professionals have to play Brahms at one point in their lives. And especially the third movement that we're about to play on this first sonata, after he wrote his two sonatas, he passed away. He, that was the last thing he wrote in his life. And there is something nostalgic and beautiful and some good memories, some bad memories about it. It just makes it sound so beautiful. Wonderful, yeah. It's a really, really lovely piece, this clarinet sonata. And you mentioned those hemiolas. That's something that I wanted to talk about too. Um, so most of the movement that you're about to hear, this allegretto, is in three, four time, meaning there are three beats in each measure. Um, you'll hear this melody. two, three, one, two, three. But there are times when Brahms decides that he's just gonna write music that's in groups of two, even though the meter that he wrote was in three. Let me find that hemiola so you can hear it. Listen for this when we play the piece. It goes. One, two, one, two, one, two. Really shakes things up. This is a lot like that three against two proportion in the Schumann. Romantic composers love to do this stuff all the time.
the last piece is quite special because we have one other guest to play with us that Mr. Lang is going to disclose after I give out information. It's four six leads, lead meaning song in German, um, and we're playing the fourth one. I didn't know this music until very recently, and I was playing with my friends when I was still a student, and we just happened to have this three specific piano and clarinet and this mystery, mystery instrument that we were going to disclose after. And it's a sheer pleasure to do it. It's a little hard to record three people together, but it's very beautiful. I'm sure you will love it. Wonderful. Yeah, this particular lead, this particular song is called the vegan lead, which means lullaby. So you can look forward to that wonderful uh, soothing, uh, lulling sound. Um, and it's going to be especially wonderful because the guest that Ms. Hale mentioned is a former teacher from our training North Phoenix, um, who's a wonderful singer, and her name is Mrs. Krauss. So here we go with Vegan Lead. And that's all we have. And it was very fun to share all this information about music I love so much with people I like so much. And thank you for listening. It was a sure pleasure. Thank you so much, everyone. See you.